Hello, it is Langang. Welcome back to my channel. If you've already been here, if not, hi, hello. It is wonderful to have you here. Please stay and by that I mean subscribe. I promised you more painting stuff I've found on the street content and I am here to make good on that promise. Remember this thing? One thing that I definitely want to paint is this. It's a spice rack. It's a spice rack. I'm not gonna use it as a spice rack because I already have one. <coughs> this is perfect for my cabinet of curiosities. But the color isn't really, you know, it. I mean, it, it would fit the rest of the living room, kind of, but it wouldn't look so great. So it needs a sanding and um, a painting. So I'm gonna do that. I found this presumable spice rack on a walk with a friend and saw its potential right away. Look at those sides, they basically beg to be painted. But first I sanded it and removed those bars because I didn't need them and then I took off the hardware. I submerged the latter in nail polish remover overnight and that took the ugly old paint job right off. I painted it with some outdoor or weather hardware store in-house brand stuff I still had around from painting my balcony floorboards. It's a great actual old lace color that I really love. For small furniture it's really really great and it's also pretty cheap. And I had it around. So what are we doing with this thing? One of my first impulses was Art Nouveau ornamentations, but we've already done that fairly recently and my range of inspiration actually includes more than the turn of the century. And in this case that means speed scrolls. Scrolls and banners and written on streamers in general make things 100% more awesome immediately. Absolutely. I mean, they feature a lot in things that I do. This one from the Annunciation to St. Anne by Bernhard Striegel is one of my all-time favorites. I think it's everyone's favorite. I don't know. I've never talked to anyone about this kind of thing. But, I mean, look at it. It's, it's super pretty. Look at that, that middle part. He might not be my favorite Ransoms painter, but the guy knew what he was doing when it came to speed scrolls. Speed scrolls. Speed scrolls. It, that is not the easiest thing to say, I do admit. And to make this even better, it's going to be fan art for Overlord. I transferred my initial drawings to the side of the rack by covering the back of the paper in charcoal and then tracing my outlines. I couldn't find the actual tracing paper that I have somewhere around, so this had to do. But it worked surprisingly well, and after tracing the charcoal with a marker, I covered the side I wasn't working on scrap fabric to prevent everything being scraped off while the rack was standing on that side. I also clamped a piece of wood to the standing side to make it less likely to fall over. A very good call from my partner. He knows how to avoid me being frustrated and insufferable after the project has fallen over and been ruined for, I don't know, the 500th time. And he would like me to add that he's also the voice of reasonable carpet preservation in my projects. His words, not mine, but he's probably right. For those of you who don't know it, and no, I'm not sponsored, I'm just a huge fangirl, Overlord and its sequel and spin-offs is a satirical action RPG initially released in 2007 that just doesn't take fantasy seriously. It might help that Rihanna Pratchett, the daughter of Sir Terry himself, was involved in writing and voice acting. You play as the recently revived titular overlord who is tasked to slay the murder hobos that killed his predecessor. The tasking is done by Narl, your wise and uh, pretty evil minion advisor. First minion up is of course Narl, because he is the eldest minion and the one with the most fleshed out character and it's also his quote on this side on the shelf, so he had to be there. He is very much evil Yoda who knows how the sentence structure of common tongue works and he insults everyone and everything and likes to remind you that you have a job to do if you hang out in your dark tower TM too much. The only thing I really changed about Nal's design is his cloak. He seems to be wearing red underneath that rag of undefined color and I wanted to do something a bit more colorful instead of just painting with 50 shades of mud because that's just not as much fun. And also I love a good oxblood red. 
So we have Narl, our stately advisor, and the minion on the bottom of the object's scroll is Quaver, the jester from the second game. You already get a jester in the first game, who doesn't really have a name, who gives you fun titles like Fatten of Slugs and Explode of Melvin Underbelly, and whom you can kick just for the fun of it. Don't worry, minions are hardy and they probably like it. But he lacks a name and Quaver has a slightly more advanced and interesting visual design as well, so I went with him instead. He has a missing eye and also a necroff and a skirt that are left off, so yes, he is effectively in the buff and uh, maybe covering himself up with the scroll. And originally he also has tattoos, but I omitted those because it would make everything look very crowded. Instead I gave him a fork tongue because I love drawing these medieval and renaissance style tongues for creatures. They are a bit like scrolls if you think about it. For the overall design I went and looked at medieval marginalia because I can't possibly go and draw the minions as they are, obviously. We have a theme here folks, we need to be extra. Conveniently, a lot of the creatures and beasts that populate the edges of medieval books aren't too far from the minions in the first place, but I was able to glean some design clues here and there. The most dominant example would probably be the definition of muscles. I couldn't have told you from memory that they were drawn this clearly, but it fitted the sinewy look of the minions very well, so I was glad I actually looked that one up. I also looked at fur textures because the way those are drawn in medieval style is kind of different from what I would do on my own and part of the minions feature fur accessories. Graver's Jester cap also features the same red as Nald's cloak so yes that was a deliberate decision to pick that up again to tie the sides together a bit. I am so sorry about the quality of this bit. I forgot to turn on the light box when it got dark while I was working on this and the faint glimmer of a living room lighting that is very pretty but not very bright didn't quite do the job. However, I wanted to keep this part of the process in the video for completion's sake, so I hope you'll forgive me. Funnily enough, there are no depictions of the cliché court jester in the style I try to emulate here. Just as in medieval art mostly look like other people or they have asses ears instead of these many horned caps that we know. The first evidence for this look is, as far as I know, from the Renaissance. Once again, I am super irritated about the fact that I couldn't find any footage of me painting the letters. I was so sure I filmed that. As you know, I really like working with typography and you might have noticed that I didn't trace the writing in the beginning or at least not with the sharpie. That is because I wanted more freedom with that and the placement and spacing did indeed change a bit between sketch and final product. I had thought about going full medieval and using a black letter type script, but I went for something a bit more cursive and readable with a fantasy twist instead and I'm quite happy with that decision, to be honest. I love the idea to have one minion each as a support of sorts on each end of each scroll, so four minions in total. I actually went and started playing the game again just to find the right quotes for this project and of course I didn't stop then. It's just, oh, it's just so adorable and full of chaos, like me! Minions feature as your main weapon in the game as well. They are goblinoid critters who love shinies and mayhem, and they are delightful little cherubs to use the words of the not-so-distressed damsel that you get to rescue because your weird gargoyle of an advisor thinks you should get hitched. I love these minions so much, and when I, when I say minions, I always mean these and not the weird yellow tic tacs from Disney. There are four subsets of minions, each named after their color. Browns, strong and straightforward and very much inclined to put everything they can find on as a hat. Reds, who throw fire and can run through flames unscorched but are uh, pretty easily breakable. Greens, sneaky little bastards who blend into their surroundings just to jump an enemy as soon as they get near them and they are a bit lizardy. And blues, who are frail but don't fucking drown as soon as they get wet like all the others and who can revive their fallen brethren and they also make the cutest gurgling noises. And all you do is basically sick him on everything around with an epic hand gesture. I love this game.
Why Overlord, though? Story time. When my partner and I were first courting, which was quite a while ago, my flatmate at that time was playing Overlord, and one of the very first evenings we spent effectively getting together was spent in said flatmate's room. Um, that's the same flatmate that is the absolute best at reading smart novels, by the way, video up there if you want to know what that is about. And the gleeful screeching of minions and the soundtrack of said game is something we've ever since referred to as our song. That and also the entirety of the producers. Even back then I had the urge to make an Obey Pumpkin banner for my flat, but um, I'm not going to explain what that is about. Play the game if you want to find out. But I never really got around to it. So this is finally the project where I pay my tribute to this wonderful, wonderful game. My partner even got me a copy for one of our fairly early anniversaries and I love this game so much. Not only for the memories, it's, it's just so incredibly fucking cute. About the quotes. For one side I went for I hear the pumpkins whispering at night. Something a farmer says in the very tutorial part after having his farm ransacked by halflings who have a weird thing going on with pumpkins. And with, ooh, an object, I like objects. Which is what Narl says every time you find an artifact that makes you stronger and which also pretty much sums me up in six words. So, ha, yeah, um, it, it had to be there, it was given, especially because this rack is going to house some of my objects. I first blocked out the bit I wanted to paint on with white acrylic to create a base. I thought I filmed that, but I couldn't find any footage of it, so it might have been one of those instances where I just forgot to actually press record after I turned the camera on. Does this happen often? <clears throat> it, um, I will not disclose that. On the pumpkin side I drew two browns. Not only are they the first group of minions you get in the game, but their fondness for absurd headdresses make them far more individualistic than the reds, greens or blues. As much as I love those, of course. A selection of my favorite hats include dead rats, the crown of the halfling boss, skulls and, of course, pumpkins. And I would be cross with myself indeed if I didn't use a pumpkin head on this thing. I really like how comfortable I'm getting with acrylics, by the way. I'm learning a bit more every time I work with them and I even start finding my favorite colors to play with. In this project I made heavy use of raw umber, which, while dark, is not quite black. But it is very dark and not very saturated, so it makes for a great mixing color to dull other colors down without giving them the cold grey tint that pure black would cause. I also love the vibrancy of the pumpkins and watching myself paint them was actually the favorite part of editing this video because you know while editing you watch the stuff over and over again or at least I do maybe there are tips and tricks that I don't know but I have watched this video a couple of times by now and this was actually the part that always made me happy. The leaves of the pumpkins are also taken from medieval drawings. For obvious reasons, there were no pumpkins in medieval Europe, so I just took some greenery that looked vaguely right, and I think it's this not quite true to natureness that makes it actually look even more like the marginalia spirit I was trying to evoke here. One thing I had also a lot of fun with was building up the glowing eyes and also that shiny stone. Even though placing the pupil always gave me anxiety, every single time, because half a millimeter can already shift a face from menacing to derpy, and that is, that is terrifying. I cleaned up the edges of the painting with more of my old lace outdoor paint, because I figured it would be easier to do this than to painstakingly try to stay inside the lines with my white acrylic base in the beginning, and um, yes. Yes, it, it, it was easier. In the end, I gave the entire thing a clear coat of spray paint and then I hammered in a few brass nails to break up the plain front. I also painted the visible part of my hardware to match the gold accents and the brass nails. And then I screwed it back on and the thing was done and only had to be hung up and 
our walls do this thing where where they are kind of obstinate bitches so it was a bit annoying anywho it now hangs and overall this project was time consuming but actually it was less time consuming than i thought it would be when i first had the idea and it was definitely worth the work you don't really see the sides when you first look at the shelf but i like the details and details like that very much and i love it when friends of ours come come in and notice these new things in the flat even though they have been here before and maybe even have seen the item before i honestly couldn't tell you which of the minions is my favorite even if i wanted to if you know which one is yours, either from the game or from my project, or even both, please let me know in the comments. If you've never played Overlord, you, should, you definitely should. If you like my videos, you would probably like this game. It's great, and if you played it, tell me in the comments so we can fan person about it together. And I hope you like this project as much as I did. I am still... this thing has been done for, I think, two weeks or so, maybe even more. And I am still super excited every time I see it. And I, I, I just really like it. And yes, that that pumpkin squishy is a stupid joke because it fits the theme. Anywho, um, and yeah, if you if you like this video and this project, consider giving it a thumbs up or share it with someone who might like it as well. It a helps the algorithm and b it's how we build the gang. Um, have a lovely time until we meet again and farewell.